What's up, everybody? I'm in my local park, or one of several. Still in Georgia, going to be heading back to the UK in September, making a special effort not to shake this around too much as we delve in to today's topic at hand. It's an interesting one. As someone who spends a lot of my time thinking about how to make progress in life and how to coach others to do the same and how to take away the barriers and restrictions that hold many of us back and provide clarity and understanding and I suppose self-support on our journeys of doing things for the better in the world and making an impact with what we have, um, doing well financially, doing well in relationships, all of that stuff is always on my mind, always trying to find ways of making it clearer and more obvious so that we can effectively gain an unfair advantage through this clearer understanding and how we can move forward. So the idea that I'm thinking about today is, and this is something that I already know, but I want to make sure that this is made clear in a, a little cheeky video recording. And that is the idea that there's only one guarantee of success. There's only one variable involved in being able to guarantee success. And when I talk about success, I'm talking about success in the sense that you are um, achieving a certain degree of mastery. You are achieving uh, refined skills. It is success in yourself. You are a better person. You are more skilled. You are more masterful at something. And I find and I know that developing mastery in something, whether it be being a great tennis player or being a fantastic musician or being a, a great coach, a superb web developer, an artist who can make a, a beautiful painting. These are the worthy forms of success because you can rely on yourself to get you there. You can create the energy in yourself. You can create the momentum. You can create the drive in yourself in order to better yourself at these skills rather than rely on the externality of impressing the world and people pleasing and gaining followers and likes and relying on the movement and actions of other people which you cannot rely on of course to gain a sense of false success so this is why people get very depressed when they identify as being successful when they have achieved a certain number of followers on YouTube or a certain number of subscribers or a certain action that has happened out in the real world that is reliant on externalities. The real form of success is your own mastery at something, your own ability to build value because once you have value that supersedes the vast majority of people, if you can become the very best at something very specific, then you are effectively indispensable. You won't even need to market yourself because <laughs> you'd be that good and you'd have people throwing money at you as long as you, you have a skill, you possess a skill that people are willing to pay money for, which is most skills, that is true success. And there is only, in defining success in that way, there is only one variable that will guarantee that success. And correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> Send me a comment below if you disagree, but the one variable is repetition. Putting in the reps, as Arnold Schwarzenegger said. Put in the reps, man. If you want to build a big body, you've got to put in the reps. Put in the reps in the gym, just one after another, one curl after another, and your body will just guarantee its growth. You cannot fail if you don't put in the reps. And the guy made sense. Repetition is if you put in enough repetition on something that is worth putting reps into, so if you want to build a buff body, the reps of lifting weights in a certain way to a certain routine, to a certain strategy, is going to get you the body, the value in yourself, the skill of being strong. 
and repetition is the key variable there. If you didn't put in the reps, you would not get success. If you want to guarantee success in the gym, you put in the repetitions. If you want to guarantee success as a coach, you coach people over and over and over again until you gain a wide variety of experiences, a wide variety of feedback, and your skills exponentially improve. If you want to be guarantee, if you want to guarantee yourself as an excellent pianist, if you want to be one of the world's best pianists, don't blame genes, don't blame little Chinese fella over there on his fortunate upbringing and his um, you not having the right kinds of genes and the right kind of upbringing to explain your lack as a pianist blame it on the lack of reps you haven't sat down at a piano enough in order to develop the skill you've been looking for to be the the greatest pianist now the thing about reps is is that um, they will define like the how how much access you have to the repetitions is going to show you what is and what isn't possible some of us whether it be through a disability or a lack of talent, innate talent, and a lack of just plain interest in something is going to be a reason behind moving across to something else when the reps reveal that we don't like doing that thing. So it's really, it's down to the repetition of something that will guide you through what is worth doing. And obviously you need to have that strength to stay with something if you find it annoying in times, but repetition is going to guide you to the right kinds of things. The problem with many people is, is that they expect things to be a little bit easier than they are and they do not put enough value into the act of repeating things over and over again and they do not have enough faith in the simple fact that repeating something over and over and over again while staying aware and whilst understanding the importance of tweaking and getting better each time, the importance of repetition is going to get you there. Byron Katie, the uh, psychologist, I think she was, is said that you can have anything that you want in the world as long as you ask enough people. And that's a sort of a, a riff on the same idea, is that you will guarantee your success if you are willing to put in the reps to, to talk to enough people. If you have a book that you need to sell, you will find success. I suppose it's a slightly different way of thinking about it because you, you cannot guarantee success based on externality, but she brought up a, the right kind of idea is that you, you can't really fail if you understand and believe in the concept of repetition. Now with Byron Katie's idea, obviously you're reliant on other people's opinions, but theoretically, yes, if you ask enough people and you focus on your skills and your the quality of your material you will find success because someone is going to eventually say yes and the same applies to whatever it is you want to develop mastery in if you're willing to put in the repetitions and you're willing to be aware and open to what that repetition and the feedback is going to give you you will be successful it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of getting over the obstacles that hold you back from doing further repetitions. That's, that's the thing that I'm getting at here is that we need to um, allow ourselves to not be um, held back by our, the, the fears that we have. And, and the reason people don't get to where they want to get is because they allow fear to stop them from repeating things. That's all it is. You've just allowed yourself to stop repeating. If you're scared of um, meeting new people and networking, it's not because you are a bad networker. It's not because um, you are innately terrible at socializing with people. You, you have just stopped yourself from repeating and practicing being good at social, being sociable. So it's about the practice. It's about the repetition. So this leads me to the, the point here which is that now that we know this, if we, if we know that by putting in enough repetition on, any, on anything, in terms of building mastery, building skill in something, what does knowing this mean for us? What does knowing this mean for our future? What 
form of repetition are we going to commit to based on what dreams we have, based on what our goals are? Think about your goals, think about your wants, and if you've let them fade into the darkness recently, re-establish those goals. What, what is it in life that you want? What would, what would it be great to be amazing at? What childhood dreams did you have? Did you want to write the next great novel? Did you want to become a, an amazing trump, trumpeter? Um, did you want to become an animator? What do you want? And then identify the form of mastery that is required of you in order to, to be that, that person. If you want to, be a, a, if you want to have a, a famous, world-renowned novel, then you're going to have to become a pretty damn good writer. And then you need to identify what kind of repetition is required of you in order to become a pretty damn good writer. And that's going to be a certain number of words every day. Just writing over and over again. That will be the repetition to identify. And that's going to be the repetition to commit to for the next phase of your life. That's the key thing. Those of us who become the geniuses in the world, they have become aware of the tremendous value in repetition. And they have made that commitment, whether it's been through loving doing it or committing oneself through the pain, through the frustration of it and, and having the highs and the lows. What repetition are you going to make an agreement with yourself on that you will do now every day that is worthy of your time, that is worthy of the effort and is worthy of those moments of crap where you don't feel like doing it? What do you want out of life and what does the repetition look like? What does the form of mastery look like? So forget those things that worry us that are externally based. So forget relying on other people for your success and start relying on yourself. And when you, when you rely on yourself, you realize the, the importance of repetition. Showing up every day and doing that thing over and over again and understanding that it will guarantee success. You cannot fail if you don't quit. You cannot fail if you don't stop repeating things. You cannot fail if you don't allow fear and boredom and frustration to stop you repeating things over and over again. When I was young, when I was 10, I used to kick and scream at the idea of going to piano lessons at school. I hated it. I thrashed and I kicked and I screamed whenever a Wednesday would come around and I had to go to the, the, uh, the little room down the corridor in school where the piano was. That's that musty smell and that teacher I didn't like. I was dreading it every time and I eventually quit. But if I had understood the importance of repetition and I had identified the goal of being a pretty damn good pianist, I would have stuck with it. And I would have kept repeating and I would have kept showing up and I would have kept practicing my scales. So think about what that all means for you. How could you apply your understanding of repetition and its importance, its total simplicity, the fact that that is really the secret. What could you do over and over again? And what commi commitment could you make? Okay, guys, hope that made sense. Alex signing out from beautiful park in Tbilisi, Georgia. Do subscribe if this made sense to you. If you want to hear more like this, do like this video. Always a pleasure to hear of your comments below. Much love, respect, and let's get repeating, guys, next time.